Good morning. I'll take my mask off so you can hear me better. Good morning. And happy Pentecost Sunday. It is good to see you all here worshiping with the First Presbyterian Church of Woodbridge. We're so glad you came. And we will begin our service with our prelude. Happy Pentecost Sunday. As you can see, this is, this is my flames mask. Um, and as I've been telling people, never underestimate the wardrobe of a ballroom dancer for things. Um, I have a few announcements. Um, we are still masking and social distancing because the state of New Jersey is still requiring it for one more week. We are going to decide what we're going to do afterwards. We, so we will keep you all informed of the decisions we are making. Um, we are going to be meeting, so um, Christian Ed worship and session. This is your warning that you will be getting emails from the church office this week, as, as I warned session last week that things were changing, and so we will, we will be changing with them. However, today, woohoo, is the first day that we can sing hymns inside the sanctuary. Yay! I'm sorry. <laughs> It's the little things that are just so exciting. Um, so so um, we are working um, on getting the, the Bibles and hymnals back into the pews. Um, we just needed to find time that people could, could gather and, and do it. So um, we guarantee that they'll be, they'll be back in the pews by the first Sunday of June. We're hoping for next Sunday, but in case um, schedules don't align, that's why we're giving us ourselves an extra week. If you would like to come and help us, please contact Bob, um, and and we will we will um, gladly take your volunteer time. 
This Sunday, we are starting, also because we are back inside, to collect um, bl a blanket and tool offering in honor or in memory for Mother's and Father's Day for Church World Service. There is um, the form in the bulletin insert and the envelope if you would like to do so. Um, I think that that is all of the announcements I have unless somebody has enough, any others that need to come before us. See none, then let us begin with our call to worship found in your bulletin. With tongues of flame, the Holy Spirit descends to burn in our hearts anew. Like the rush of wind, we sense God's presence blowing afresh throughout the world. Across the barriers of language and culture, Christ's message of love and grace is heard. Divine Advocate, we seek your guidance as we search for the spirit of truth.
please be seated. And just as a little aside, by June 1st, or the first Sunday of June, I will add back all of the other things into our service and figure out where we're supposed to stand and where we're supposed to sit, because I don't remember anymore. <laughs> I have said that, you know, a global pandemic makes the job of an interim pastor so much easier. I didn't have to blow up anything that we've always, that you all always did. The pandemic did it, so we're all going to figure out how to move forward together. Let us together pray our prayer of invocation. Holy One, Ignite within us a fiery passion for your mission in the world today. Warm us by the Spirit's dancing tongues of flame, that we may feel your kindling blaze within, urging us to do your greater good. Make us wholly present to experience a new birth and awaken possibilities within us to share your love in the world. In this love and abundance, we come to celebrate your harvest, a harvest bearing the first fruits of the Spirit within us. Show us how to use these gifts as we listen for your truth in the gentle breeze of your Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, God's Spirit calls to us every moment of every day. Sometimes we respond and sometimes we have to be honest and admit that we don't. Let us together confess together. Please join me in our prayer of confession. Holy God, you do dwell within us in size too deep for words yet we cannot hear you. Compassionate God, you wrap us tenderly in fierce love. You give us the breath of life, yet we cannot touch you. Christ Jesus, we yearn for your presence. We seek your abundant grace, yet we cannot feel it. Spirit of holiness, you prepare to sear our souls for your purpose yet we allow our somber selves to intrude, shutting our minds to your power. Remind us, we pray, that we need only trust in the giver of life to find the hope and faith you have promised. Gather us up in the winds of your favor and carry us to ever greater heights through Christ who loves us still. Amen. Dear friends, do not be afraid. Our comforter and advocate has come. Rejoice in the knowledge that all is forgiven. People of the Spirit, listen. The wind that drives the heavens, the wind that soars above and beyond us all, unifies us in God's love. Keep the Spirit's flame alight within your heart. Await the new birth in Christ that is promised to all. Thanks be to God. And let us pray together. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Open our hearts and minds and lives to your call through these holy words. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 22 through 27. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes 
for what is seen. But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Our second reading this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And as the sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, the crowd asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from, from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not, not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your m young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of God's holy word. Well, today we celebrate Pentecost, 50 days after Easter, when God pours out the Holy Spirit on to the disciples and into the world. This is a significant day in the life of the church. Some people actually call it the birthday 
of the church. As transformative as the resurrection is to our faith as Christians, Pentecost is just as transformative. Because in so many ways, this day is the second most important day in the Christian calendar, second only to Easter. And I say this because without Pentecost, without God's Spirit coming and filling the disciples with courage, power, and zeal to move out of their hiding places and to, and to proclaim the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, Christianity might never have become anything other than a footnote in Judaism. Henry Nouwen states it this way, without Pentecost, the Christ event, the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus remains imprisoned in history as something to remember, think about, and reflect on. The spirit of Jesus comes to dwell within us so that we can become living Christ's here and now. Think about it. After the crucifixion, the disciples were scared for their lives, and I would add, with good reason. Then they experience the resurrection. They then know that what Jesus told them was true, but they were still scared of the authorities, both Jewish and Roman, and they were still trying to figure out what to do next. So the coming of the Holy Spirit into their lives inspires them to move beyond their fears and to realize that now they have a mission. They are to proclaim the message of Jesus to the world. Good news is only as good as it is known news. Because without the courage of the Spirit, the disciples would have still been very quiet. It is God's Spirit that inspires them to move out and to proclaim the gospel to Jerusalem, to the rest of Judea, and to the known world. Pentecost is the event that creates Christianity as a religion of its own. And that's why I hold Pentecost is even more important than Christmas. Even though we love Christmas, I love Christmas too. But without Pentecost, the message doesn't get out. Dr. Cheryl Lindsay states that the day of Pentecost launches a new era of ministry in which the followers of Jesus would become followed themselves. The good news would spread exponentially and transcend religious, cultural, and language barriers. The, the spirit would facilitate communication of truth. And the disciples would transition to their roles as apostles, establishing believers throughout Asia Minor, Minor, Northern Africa, and Southern Europe over the remainder of their lives. This is an important point the disciples transitioning from disciple to apostle. They're going from, from followers to proclaimers. They're going from a more passive existence to a more active existence. The same is, is offered to us. We also 
as we celebrate Pentecost, are invited to move from a passive reception of Jesus' love to actively spreading it everywhere. This is what Pentecost is all about. This is why we wear red and have flame earrings on. It is to remind us that ours is an active faith. Ours is a way to move out of our comfort zones and follow where the Spirit calls us. This year, Pentecost is in a perfect time as we all are feeling very mixed feelings of as we are moving back into our lives of before the pandemic. We are learning again what it means to be a people out and about. We are learning again how to respond to each other and how to even recognize each other with their full face again. We can see smiles. We have been living for the past year and a half in a very small and in some ways passive existence. This year, it is, it, it, it is so significant to me that on Pentecost is when we are beginning to shed truly our pandemic life and move back into the world. We now have the opportunity to live God's spirit fully and completely. We are re-emerging. We are living lives of courage and power and zeal once again. Pentecost can indeed be seen as a new beginning for us. We have been resurrected out of the pandemic and are now called to begin again, to live and move and claim our places in this world once more. What celebrates Pentecost more than this? And so some questions arise. How can we expand our circle to be God's people and instruments of love and grace in this world? We have been growing and changing over this past year. We are the same, and yet we are different. We are a new people in many ways, and yet God's love and care for us never changes. We base, our love, we base our lives on God's love and care for us. Let us also base our lives on the passion of the Holy Spirit to inspire us to live God's love and grace in new and tangible ways. Lindsay also states that the Spirit met them as they gathered together in unity waiting for the breath to fuel their ministry and give them words to proclaim and testify. The resurrection people are now called to become Pentecost people. The community will expand beyond that original circle to birth new communities, and the life of the Spirit will breathe through all of them. Pentecost people live in the authority that new life is to partner with God and that through the Holy Spirit is to realize the vision of God's beloved community. That is what we are called as Pentecost people to try new things, to live in new ways, to live as a people filled with new wine. For remember, and I was just reminded of this fact this morning in my daily devotional, that new wine, if you remember correctly, new wine is not that fermented. 
Old wine is very fermented. You can get drunk on old wine. You really can't get drunk on Welch's grape juice. And yet, in that time, new wine meant to do something different. It was the first century version of, but we've never done it this way before. And so, on Pentecost, what is happening with the disciples becoming apostles is they are trying out for the first time new ways of living God's love and proclaiming God's grace. We are invited to do the same thing. Let us become apostles for the good news to all the world in whichever way we are called to do that. Let us open our hearts and our lives to the movement of the Spirit of God. Let us release our fears and insecurities so that we may be agents of change and of love in our lives and in our world. Let us boldly proclaim this day, come Holy Spirit, renew the whole creation. Take our lives and lead us to new places of faith and grace and love. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen.
Please be seated. We have now come to the time in our service where I invite you to share your joys, your concerns, your reasons to give thanks. Yes. It is. I think, you know, it's sort of we giving thanks to be together and inside permanently, or mostly permanently. You know, I don't, you know, I, if I say that, something else could happen. So, you know, back to, to whatever normal is. Um, and I think it's so significant that it is on Pentecost Sunday. I, I really do. Theologically, it just works. I know, I know we were hoping for Christmas or Easter or something, but, I, you know, it just feels right, and it feels so good, and it felt, I don't know about you guys, but it felt so good to sing inside again where it reverberates. And yes, I'm starting to cry because it's so exciting. It's been a long pandemic. Um, so yes, um, also I would like to, to remind us all to keep in our thoughts and prayers the members of the class of 2021 um, who in some ways um, are, are also having graduations of, of a bit different this year. And, in some, and for some, they're feeling like people did extra special things for the class of 2020 and, and it's sort of not happening. So um, keep all of our, our graduates this year in your hearts and your minds. And if you know one, do something special for them. They will appreciate it. Um, I'm trying to remember, because I, I saw the news this morning, and I said, I want to raise it as a prayer request. Is it the Congo where things are, aren't? Yes. So let, let us remember the people of the Congo um, who, yeah, something's happening. The volcano, thank you. <laughs> I, I am now at the age that if it doesn't get written down, it doesn't exist in my mind. But yes, let us keep um, the people of the Congo with the volcano in our thoughts and prayers. Are there any others? Yes! That we love having babies among us. And... and and I am very excited to start to meet with both of you and, and plan your joining the church and the baptism of your son. Um, for everyone who said, but what's going to happen when we move on to online worship, I'm going to say we get a new young family. So welcome. Are there any others? Then, with all that is on our hearts and our minds, let us turn to God in prayer, first with the silent prayers of our hearts. Let us pray. Spirit of God, Come and fill our hearts on this Pentecost. Inspire us to be the people you dream us to be. Inspire us to live lives that show forth your love and your grace to all we meet. Inspire us, Spirit of God, to follow you. And help us, help us when following you becomes hard. Help us when we get discouraged. 
Help us when we get tired. Help us when the world weighs too heavy on our hearts and our shoulders. Remind us of your new life. Remind us of your spirit and your vision. Blow through our lives and invigorate us once more. Help us, holy God, to be your holy people, finding ways to expand our circle so that our community may show forth your love more fully. And on this day of Pentecost, holy God, we pray because we know just how important prayer is. We pray for all those people who grieve and mourn. We ask that they know your peace. We pray with all those people who are celebrating this day, knowing that their celebrations are sweeter with your presence. We pray for all of those people who are ill, in body, mind, or spirit. We ask that your healing presence be with them and that your guidance be with all who care for them. We pray for all those people who wrestle with questions that loom so large and answers that feel so small. We ask that they know your hope. We pray, holy God, for all those people who give of themselves in so many different ways so that we may lead and live our blessed lives. We ask that you keep them safe. And always, holy God, we pray that there would be an end to violence and war and hatred and that your peace and your justice and your mercy come to all corners of this earth. Lead us and guide us, holy God, to be your faithful people here and now, proclaiming your Pentecost mission and your love everywhere we go. We pray this prayer and all prayers in the name of the one you sent for us, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Dear friends, God has blessed us so, so richly. Let us give a part of that back to God. We are still not passing the collection plate, so, so it will still be in the back, so you can... Um, put your donations in as you leave. You can mail it to us. Um, you can drop it into our mailbox on the side door, or you can give online through the church website or PayPal. And together, let us pray our prayer of dedication. When we do not know how to pray, your Holy Spirit prays for us in sighs too deep for words. Hear our prayers for goodness in the world. Receive these gifts that they may help answer the Holy Spirit's hope for all creation. Amen. <laughs> 